What's going on guys, my name's Theoatrix and today I'm going to be talking about the most useful teleports that are in old school RuneScape. Now there are a lot of very useful teleports and I'm going to go through pretty much all of them in this video. It's going to be a bit of a long video but I'm going to try to talk as fast as I can so I can get through them. Starting off with the regular spellbook and the teleport to house spell is a very good teleport not just because it can take you to your house but you can move it to certain places like Relica or the Great Curran. Once you leave your house you will lose all poison damage and you also heal whatever you lost from the poison damage. So it's pretty, it's a pretty safe teleport. And on top of that, if you die in your house, you just respawn outside and you don't lose anything. It's a way to get out of danger. Another overly useful teleport on the regular spellbook is the teleport to Kurand. And that can only be done once you get the teleport incantations book from the Arceus library. And the teleport takes you straight to the catacombs of Kurand. And this is great for things like Slayer or if you just want to kill the monster that are in there. The next one is the Trollheim teleport and you need Edgar's Ruse to do this and it is the t closest teleport to God Wars and on top of that it's very close to a disease-free herb patch in the Troll Stronghold. Now for some ancient teleports, the Carol teleport or Kirill teleport teleports you to Canifus and you can actually put this one into a portal into your player-owned house which makes it a little bit nicer and also it's really useful because it's because Canifus is a bit out of the way in terms of teleports. It's not so easy to get to so the Carol teleport is really helpful. The Dariak teleport takes you straight to the crazy archaeologist in the wilderness. It is in the wilderness, so be a bit careful when you're using this one, but it's great if you feel like killing the crazy archaeologist. The Anakal teleport takes you to the demonic ruins, which is great for a variety of reasons. It's close to Venonatus and Callisto, and it's also close to the Chaos Elemental, which is awesome. And it's also very, very close to Lava Dragon. The Gorok Teleport is close to the King Black Dragon. And it's also very close to the Wilderness Agility Course. And that takes you, the Gorok Teleport takes you to the Ice Plateau area. On the Lunar Spellbook, there is the Urania Teleport. Uh, and that is really, really helpful for speeding up your rune crafting at the ZMI or I think it's known as the Irania Altar. And the teleport is closer to the bank rather than running back after you craft your runes at that altar. So it is really good for speeding it up. Another one on the Lunar Spellbook is the Water Birth Teleport. And this one is great for getting to the Dagonoth Kings. And it's also an alternative way to get to Relica. You teleport there and then use the boat to get off. Now on the Arceus Spellbook, there is a lot of very useful teleports. I'm only gonna talk about two in particular. Draenor Manor Teleport takes you close to Arva. So if you lose your Arva's device, you can go straight there and get a new one. Another one is the Barrow's Teleport. And you can actually buy Barrow's Teleport tablets on the Grand Exchange. You don't actually need to unlock the Spellbook to be able to use them. And they are by far the fastest way to get to Barrow's. And it speeds up your Barrow's runs by a mile. The next things I'm gonna talk about is the Jewelry. And the Games Necklace is very useful. All of the teleports are quite useful. But in particular, the Corporal Beast Teleport is really useful to get into the deep wilderness very fast. The Ring of Dueling has a Castle Wars teleport, which is right next to a bank, one of the closest teleports to a bank in the game. And this is very commonly used for things like runecrafting, Slayer, and a lot of other skills where you need to bank very regularly. The Amulet of Glory can be mounted in your house, and you can also just use a regular Amulet of Glory. And the teleport to Edgeville is probably the most useful one out of it because there's not really any other teleports that go straight to Edgeville, except for the home teleport on the Ancient Spellbook, but that's a bit disregarded. The Amulet of Glory has some other really useful teleports as well, but the Edgeville one has to be the best. The Ring of Wealth, if you haven't completed the Varrock Medium Diaries, it's really useful because it can teleport you straight to the Grand Exchange and you can also teleport to Miscellanea with it, and that is great for kingdom management and keeping your kingdom alive. Now, another piece of jewelry is the Slayer Rings, and it's probably one of my favorite and most useful teleports in the game. And the reason for that is because it can teleport you to many good Slayer Caves in the game, like the Slayer Tower, the Fremenic Slayer Dungeon, and the Stronghold Slayer Cave. And the te teleport to the Stronghold Slayer Cave is right next to Neve, so it's really great for getting a new task as well. Derek's Talisman, which sort of is jewelry, I guess, is dropped by Lizardmen, and it has a lot of useful teleports across the Zaya area, and my favorite one on here has to be the one to raids. You need the magic tablet to be able to use the teleport to raids. Uh, it's actually a drop from raids, the magic tablet, but once you unlock it, the teleport is very close to a bank and it takes you straight to the chambers of Zeric or Raid. The Burning Amulet is another very useful 
piece of jewelry and that teleports you to many places well three places in the wilderness and the best one out of the burning amulet teleports has to be the lava maze that one is near the king black dragon and the lava dragon and it's also very very close to the chaos fanatic now this one's not exactly jewelry but it's another very useful one and that is the pharaoh scepter and there's a couple of useful teleports on there but the best one is the jal savra i think that's how you say it and that takes you straight to pyramid plunder so while you're doing pyramid plunder it's really useful for getting out of the cave and going straight back in using that teleport pharaoh scepter is quite expensive but it is very worth it now the next one is spirit trees and spirit trees have quite a few useful teleports the main ones are at the battlefield near ardoyan that one is close to ardoyan if you haven't unlocked the ardoyan teleport yet the Tree Gnome Stronghold teleport with the Spirit Tree is very, very close to the Slayer Caves at the Tree Gnome Stronghold, and it's close to Neve. And of course, the Grand Exchange teleport with the Spirit Trees is very handy as well. Now, the Fairy Rings have tons of useful teleports. I'm going to talk about seven in particular. Firstly, AIQ takes you to Mudskipper Point, which is very, very close to Wyvern. AJR teleport takes you to Fremenic Slayer Caves, which is great for Slayer. The ALP teleport takes you to the Lighthouse. Now, from here, I decided it's probably not worth me going through all of them. You can pause the video and read the ones on the screen. It's just a bit boring if I keep reading them. The next ones I'm going to talk about are the Achievement Diary teleports. And the Explorer's Ring that you get after doing the Lumbridge Diaries teleports you to the Cabbage Patch, which is so close to a herb patch and a few other patches. The Ardoyan Cloak is an another really useful one and that teleports you to the Monastery and it also teleports you to a farming patch with the higher tier Ardoyan Cloaks. But the Monastery teleport is actually somewhat close to a Fairy Ring and the Farm Patch teleport is great for herb running and if you're doing other runs like a lot. The next ones are the Clue Scroll teleport scrolls that you get as a reward from Clue Scrolls. There is the Nada teleport, which teleports you deep into the desert, and that is really useful for a few quests, and a few other uses, like getting to Bandit Camp a bit of a different way, and also, it's an alternative way to get to Pyramid Plunder. The Elf Camp teleport takes you near the Elves, which are a common Slayer task, not many people like doing them, but the Elf Camp teleport takes you literally right where they are, so it's not that bad. The Tybro 1A teleport is a little bit hard to get to without the teleport, and if you use this tele, you can get straight to the new Dragon area, the Dragon Slayer area. Uh, there's a guy there that takes you into his Metal Dragon Cave, and you can kill them as long as you're on a Slayer task. Piscatorus or Piscatorus teleport takes you to the low level hunting area and also near the falconry which is a bit of a higher tier hunting area and it also is very close to kraken the lunar isle teleport is another awesome one from the clue scroll teleport rewards and this is great if you're not on the right spellbook and you want to change your spellbook you can simply use this telly and then run to the altar to change to the spellbook a couple more to get through there is the skill capes and the quest cape is one of the most useful ones here it's not really a skill but you get the point this quest cape teleport takes you to the legends guild and that teleport is unbelievably close to a fairy ring which is very useful then the next one is the crafting skill cape and this one is super close to a bank i think it's one of the closest teleports to a bank in the game and it is very very handy since it has unlimited charges all the time the final ones I'm going to talk about are the quest item teleports. And firstly is the Ectophile. That teleports you to the Ectophantus and that is great for prayer in itself, but it also is very close to Port Phasmatis, which is sort of hard to get to otherwise unless you use a charter ship. The teleport crystal is given to you after you start Morning Ends Part 1. And this teleport takes you straight to Lalata, or later, I don't know how to say that, but that takes you very, very close to the tree patch that's in there. The Royal Seed Pod is rewarded to you after you complete Monkey Madness 2, and that takes you straight to the Grand Tree, and the reason why this one's so good is because it's a one-click teleport with unlimited charges, and it's somewhat close to a bank, actually. But anyways, guys, that is all of the most useful teleports I wanted to talk about. Sorry if I spoke really quickly in this video, I wanted to get through them as quickly as I could. I didn't want to drag this video out, but anyway, now it's time for Clip of the Day. Today's Clip of the Day is from Stans, and he's been doing a lot of easy clues recently, and he managed to get the Team Cape Zero on his 385th easy treasure trail, which is probably one of the most expensive rewards from an easy clue scroll. And then scroll along seven more clue scrolls later, he got another Team Cape Zero, and that is another three mil in the bank. So that is so lucky, man. The drop rate for those capes is very rare. So well done on getting those. 
And I've got one final little clip of the day from Filthy Ethnic, who was killing the Dagonoth Kings, and on his first ever Dagonoth Supreme kill, he got the Archer's Ring, which is probably the most valuable ring apart from the Berserker Ring, but it is still very, very valuable. Congratulations, man. That is awesome for your first ever kill. But anyways, guys, if you want to submit a clip of the day, my website is up and running. You can really easily submit. There's a simple tab on my website that you just fill out. It takes like two seconds. Submit your video or your screen clipping. And of course, if you haven't seen my 25K in real life Q&A video, that will be a card on the screen right now. If you guys want to get to know me a little bit, that is a very good video for that. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you learned something, be sure to leave a like and also subscribe if you're new. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.